The world of Lord of the Rings Online is a very big place. Through our questing, we may not always be able to spot every little thing that Standing Stone Games and Turbine have added. Because of this, I've started a series that will focus on them. Today's episode is going to focus around the town of Bree rather than Breeland proper. The next video in the series will cover Breeland as a whole, but I wanted to focus on Bree due to the sheer amount of love and detail given to this iconic town. Scary Crow, a former developer for Turbine, single-handedly remade Bree, and they added a great deal of cool easter eggs and lore details to it. Let's take a look at some of the most interesting ones. These are 10 things you may have missed in Bree. Have you ever wondered why there's so many ancient ruins scattered across Bree? In the early years of the Third Age, the Great East Road cut Bree land between the powers of the Arthedain Kingdom and the Cardolan Kingdom. Bree and all land south of the East Road fell under the purview of Cardolan. Bree served as a major trading post nearest to its capital, the Barrow Downs. In the Boar Fountain Courtyard, a woman sometimes sticks her head out of the second story window to overlook the happenings of the bustling city. Neat, right? Have you ever noticed all the boar statues around Bree? You might have noticed the boar fountain. The first settlers of Bree hunted the significant amount of boars across Bree land for food and trading purposes. The statues then were built to commemorate them. Next to the Coombe Gate and within Beggar's Alley, you can find kids playing hide and seek having a great old time. Hobbits make up a great deal of the residents within Bree. Because of this, even the inn at the Prancing Pony accommodated them. Barlam and Butterbur stayed in the chapter at the inn of the Prancing Pony in the Fellowship of the Ring. We've got a room or two in the North Wing that were made special for hobbits when this place was built. On the ground floor as they usually prefer, round windows and all as they like it. That particular detail was of course added in the game. You can even find a hobbit hole entrance to the inn at the side of the building where good old Nob is often seen coming and going. Speaking of hobbits, the north hills of Bree are littered with little hobbit holes. Tolkien made special mention of this in the chapter at the Sign of the Panting Pony in the Fellowship of the Ring. There were also many families of hobbits in the Bree land, and they claimed to be the oldest settlement of hobbits in the world, one that was founded long before even the Brandywine was crossed and the Shire colonized. They lived mostly in Staddle, though there were some in Bree itself especially on the higher slopes of the hill, above the houses of men. Above the scholar's stair, there is a door with a cat in front of it. Entering this home will reveal a disheveled room with a tremendous amount of cats and kittens strewn about. Curiously, there is no person in Bree that claims this home. I wonder who lives there? Near the north gate of Bree, you can witness a rather unfortunate accident. A couple of hobbits brilliantly decided to ride a horseless wagon down the hill. Here, you can witness the hilarious aftermath of this decision unfold. There's a very well hidden easter egg in Bree Town Hall that pays homage to the book The Indian in the Cupboard. Behind the stairwell going to the second floor of the hall, you can find a little boy playing with a Bree Guard toy and an Angmarin toy that come to life and fight one another. Throughout Bree, you can find various dwarves doing some rather unsavory things. From a drunken dwarf near the Coombe Gate, to gambling dwarves in the Scholar's Stair. Every nook and cranny in Bree has a new secret to reveal. And those are the 10 things you may have missed in Bree. Is there anything I might have missed? Let me know in the comments below and hopefully I can add it to a future video. See you soon!